Hi everyone, I'm Aaron Rump. In the last video, we went over how to create an assembly going over the part one. For this video, we're going to go over the second part two assembly right here. So we're going to click on our tutorial, and it's going to tell us what we're going to be doing. I'm going to click creating the base, and this one's going to go a little bit faster because we already have a good understanding of what we're trying to achieve right now in SOLIDWORKS. So I'm going to click on New, I'm going to go to Part, and down here I'm going to make sure that I'm in MMGS so that it aligns itself with our tutorials. I'm going to make sure that my view is unshaded with lines. I'm going to extrude a boss. I'm going to click the front plane as it does show there. I'm going to sketch a corner rectangle, which is right here. I'm going to kind of eyeball where it needs to be, so it's telling me that it wants me to make a 120 by 120. So I'll kind of move my cursor around until it's pretty close. We'll say it's about right there. We can always zoom out later. And then I'm going to go Smart Dimension, and I'll click on my first one, and I'll make it 120, Enter. I'll click right here and drop it, 120, Enter, or I can click the check mark and then I'm going to go to exit the sketch so when I exit the sketch it's going to put us into our extrude screen so my end condition needs to be set to blind and we're going to set this to 90 so I'll hit enter to give me a preview and then I'll hit check mark for OK if I like it then I can always click here for zoom to fit and I always like to click off of it so I can see this the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to create my fillets right here and I'm going to select these corners and if I need to I have to rotate it to get that one and then once I rotate it in the radius I'm going to set the fillet parameters to 10 which it's already there it doesn't always default to 10 but I'll type it in and hit enter and you can see my full preview so then I'll hit OK so now I'm going to go into the next part. So on shell, I'm going to select the front of the face, and then I'm going to go the faces listed in the faces to remove, and I'm going to go into shell, and then when I click it, it shows that face to be right there. I'm going to change my thickness to 4, I'm going to hit enter, and then I'm going to hit OK. Now, when I do that, it does show that this shell is right there. Now we're going to save this part as tutor number two. So I'll go save. We'll save it as tutor two. And we'll hit save. Next, we're going to go to creating a lip on the part. Now, keep in mind, we're going through this pretty quick, so you're doing good. Just keep up. I'm going to click right here. I'm going to zoom on this corner. Now I'm going to click on select so that I can select the wall and then it's going to have me go to extrude cut. Now sometimes when I go to extrude cut it takes me out of this nice view that I just set up. But I'm going to click extrude cut. It did take me out of it. I can simply rotate it and I can do a zoom right back to where I was. It's almost like it's a little bit backwards. And then I'm going to go to convert entities. Now when I click on this, if you watch my screen, you'll notice that it made these lines right here. Okay, So I'm going to scroll down. It says Convert Entities, and now I'm going to click on the face again. Now when I click on the face, it has all of these sketch entities that it has marked. Now I want to offset them. So back up here, I'm going to click Offset, and we're going to go to the next page. Now right here, under the parameters of the offset distance, I'm going to change this to 2. I hit enter so it gives me a preview but if you'll notice it is the wrong direction so I can click right here to change it or I can go right here to reverse and it puts it right there. I'm going to click OK and then I'm going to exit my sketch and of course it comes back up to here I'm going to go ahead and rotate it now if you look it wants to go the full length of my part well I don't want to go the full length so under direction 1 it is set to blind and we're going to set it to 20 and I like to hit enter so it kind of gives me a preview of what I'm about to do 
it says you may need to flip it so if it is this way you want to change it to this way and I'm going to hit OK and you see that it does make my lip and again I like to click off so it gives me my view I'll click for zoom to fit right here and I have my part so here's the good news that was relatively quick we're going to work on changing the color and then getting this assembly put together so I'm going to right click on Tutor 2 icon up here and as I right click it you'll see that this appearances pops up and then I'm going to select Tutor number 2. When I select it you might have a pop-up screen that comes out over here but I'm going to come over to here and I'm going to get it pretty close to where I think the model is. You can make it whatever color you want but just for this I'm going to try to get it a little bit closer right there and then I'll select OK and then I'm going to click Save. So I click Save and then I'm going to start creating the assembly. So right here it tells us what we're going to be doing and I'm going to go kind of slow right here to make sure that you understand what's happening. So I'm going to click New. I'm going to go on to Assembly and I'm going to click OK. Now under Part Assembly it says select Tutor 1. Now Tutor 1 is not out there. That's Tutor 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to browse for Tutor 1 like it's asking for. I'm going to hit Open. And you'll notice that it does change. Now it does have both of these selected so I'm going to deselect Tutor 2 so it only puts out one out there and then it's going to want me to insert the next one. So I got keep visible on here when I had that up there. It did, it did have that already there. If this was at a diagonal angle, you'll see where that is. So to get the other one in there in the property manager up here under assembly, I'm going to click on insert additional components. Here's that keep visible I was talking about. So I'm going to browse for tutor number two and hit open and it's right there. Now here's the good news. If I was to click insert components and both of them are there, I can click and drag both of them in there. Now the way this shows you is how to find them if both of them do not appear on your browse. So I'm going to click zoom to fit and now I'm going to hit next topic. So now we're in the mating assembly of the toolbars. So up here I'm going to come up to mate and I'm going to select this corner and I'm going to select this corner. And if you need to zoom up and get right on that corner and then I'm going to zoom out and then if you'll notice it says this property bar should come up and because it does have the right edges selected I'm going to select coincide and now what it talks about these symbols and that being down there and this freedom if you'll notice I can move the part left and right I can rotate it but I cannot separate it from the edge I just made it to so I'll pull it out a little bit right here and now I'm going to go to more mates I'm going to select these two sides because mate is still active so it doesn't matter which one you click first and then I'm going to click OK so now if you'll notice I can only rotate it this way I can't come back and forth or up and down so I'm going to repeat the same steps but I'm going to click the top faces one and two and then I'm going to hit OK so good news I have fully assembled these two parts together now that they are completed I will hit OK once more and that is it so now I'm going to use a couple displays to show you what's going on. At the top of the feature manager tree, to the right of the tabs, there's going to be little symbols. So what I do is I drag this out so that I can see it. And when I click on it, because it is this little chevron, it's going to show me this display states. I'm going to right click, I'm going to add a display state, and I'm going to call it temp, and I'll hit enter. I'm going to move the pointer over to Tutor 2 right here and I'm going to go all the way to the display right here and I'm going to change it to Hidden 
lines visible. Hidden lines visible. When I do that, it's going to show all those lines, and it's going to show that my part is indeed mated to there and inside of it. That works out really well. So now that I can see that, I'm going to hide the display. I'm going to right click on that same symbol. I'm going to go display state one, and then I'll come back to here and put it back into my solid. And that way you can see that my part is mated and you can see based on our hidden lines that we just showed that the part is inside of it. So again, my name is Aaron Runk. Congratulations on finishing this tutorial and stay tuned for more videos.